take a little break from the crochet and get your sewing on. Sigoni, Sigoni, how's your macaroni? Hey guys, and welcome back to week three of the Cheaters Gingham Blanket Cow. I am so excited to have you here today because we are finally going to put our blanket together. So just a quick recap, you should have four panels of your A and C colors, and you should have five panels for your A and B colors. Now you can really sew your panels together a few different ways. You can use a tapestry needle, which is what we're going to do today, or you can use your crochet hook. However, I did want to see what this looked like for myself so that I could let you guys know. So I tried the slip stitch join with my my crochet hook and it didn't look too pretty and the reason why is because this is a bulky yarn so whenever you are looking at the back side of the blanket it will have a huge bulge and you can see in this picture what I'm talking about but if you choose to do that way that is perfectly fine it's just up to you and what you like the best so today we're going to do the whip stitch method what you're going to need to join your panels is a large eyed tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, your locking stitch markers, and the yarn that you'll be using to sew your panels together. I chose to use color A because I felt that that would go best with all the colors. Okay, so first things first, before you start sewing your panels, you want to make sure that they are lined up perfectly. The first thing you need to do is make sure that they are on the same side. So you can see here that these two panels are already lined up on the same side. So this is where I started my foundation chain and worked my first row of stitches. So they're both on the same side and the best way to know that is that our starting tails are on the same side. And if you already weaved in these ends, just make sure that your stitches are facing the same direction and one of them's not upside down. Now for this pattern, this panel is actually supposed to be on the left side. So what we're doing is we're working from the left side of the blanket to the right side of the blanket. You also wanna make sure that these are facing right side up. And again, with the two tails on the end, this means this is the right side. The next thing you'll want to do is get your locking stitch markers. I like to use these bold pins because you can pull them out and stretch them out if you need to. That way this point isn't snagging my yarn. But if you don't have these, that's totally fine. You can use regular stitch markers as well. So what I did was mark every last row of each color. So I would take my stitch marker, insert it around that last stitch here, and then I would grab my next panel and insert it around the last stitch of that row and then lock it in place just like that. And now we'll pull it down and lock these two stitches together. Now just continue repeating this process on the last row of each square until you reach the very end. I don't really find it necessary to mark that last row because you should be good to go here. All right, and like I said previously, both of these should be your right side. So again, even with even when we tied off both of our panels, we tied off on the left side. If you are left-handed, then it would be on the opposite side. Now to start sewing these together, you'll want to spread it out so it's all the way across a table. A table would be best. You could even lay this out on your bed in front of you. So we have both panels facing right side up and we're going to fold them over. That means both of our right sides should be facing on the inside. Now take the strand that you're going to sew your panels together with, and you're gonna need quite a bit of yarn to sew this entire panel. So what I did was I counted by each square. I wanted to double it, but also add a couple more to the end. So because we have 11 squares, we're going to count to 27. So we're just doing the length of one square. So we have one, two, three, four, five, 25, 26, 27. So I count to about 27 and then I cut my yarn. Now go ahead and thread your tapestry needle and make sure that you have a large eyed tapestry needle so that it's easier to get your bulky yarn through. Also, if you're having trouble, here's a quick tip. Just fold your yarn over like this, insert it, into your tapestry needle and pull it out. So that's if you're having trouble getting these strands through. Okay, so to start, we have both of our panels here. Here's our stitch marker to mark each square. We're going to insert our tapestry needle into this very first stitch here. Then we're going to grab the end of the back panel and we're going to pull it all the way through We're gonna leave about a four inch tail here. 
Now we're going to go through the same spot, so that very first stitch and that very first stitch on the other side. Pull it all the way through. And this would be a lot easier if your ends were already woven in. Now moving on to the next row, we're going to insert our tapestry needle at the end of this row. So this is the chain two from this row. We're going to insert it into the first panel and then find our next row and insert our tapestry needle. Then pull all the way through. And whenever you are whip stitching your panels, you wanna make sure that you're pulling extra tight. Now here's our third row and then we're gonna match it up with the third row on the other side. And this is all you're gonna do the entire panel down. So find your next row and just continue to match it up. And that's why we have those locking stitch markers to make sure that we're sewing everything up nice and even. If you see that things are off, you can just take out your tapestry needle and pull your stitches out. Before you start working on this, it might sound a little tedious, but I actually think it's kind of fun to take a little break from the crochet and get your sewing on. Plus, it has a magnificent turnout. I did this the other night while watching Home Edit, and by the time the show was over, I was surprised to see that I already had a panel done. All right, and when you've reached the last row, we're going to whip stitch them twice, just to make sure that the ends are extra secure. And so now once you finish with that, you have your first two panels sewn together. So this is what your panels will look like. So it's really nice. It's not too noticeable and there's no huge bulge in the back. So this is what the back would look like. So it's not too bad. I think it looks beautiful and I'm super excited for you to see the whole thing. Now, of course you would just weave in all of your ends and then you'd be good to go. To add on your next panel, we're going to start from the bottom, making sure that our panels are nice and lined up. So I can see here that this is the bottom side of my next panel. So this is the bottom, my stitches are facing up, and this is where I began my foundation chain. So I'm going to line it up just like this. And again, I'm gonna use my stitch markers to line up each row. And for this part, you also wanna have your panels facing right side up. And once you have all of your stitch markers ready, you're going to take the panel that you just attached and flip it over. That way we're looking at the back side of the panel. Then you'll thread your yarn and go ahead and whip stitch again all the way across. And the reason why we have to make sure that this is the back side of the panel is because on the back side, you can see the bulge more than the front side. And that is how you sew together the panels of your blanket. If you have any questions about this tutorial at all, leave them in the comments below so I can get back with you. Once you have all of your panels sewn together, go back and weave in all ends if you haven't already. And next week we'll be crocheting the border and finishing the blanket. I'm so excited, I can't wait to see your finished blankets and I hope you've been enjoying this cow so far. I'll see you next week. 